Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Devin Adams. I'm a Fortnite instructor here in Tempe, Arizona, and I do these videos for the people who take my class. So, and uh, yep, this is what, like the fifth video or something like that in a playlist of getting our SD WAN to, to fail over using MPLS, which is just really a site to site, point to point connection. Um, but also our VPN. So, and that's really what I personally could not figure out winging it in class last week. <laughs> Made me look like a real idiot. Anyways, and I really wasn't impressed with the documentation that was out there. And uh, so, yeah, that was my challenge to get it working before the end of the weekend. Now, it's the end of the weekend and it's super late. And guess what? I did get it to work. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Not to the complexity that I wanted to. That can wait till another time. I've recorded way too many videos in a short period of time. Um, so I'm just saying, let's just stick with something basic here. So let's talk about what we've done so far. So here's headquarters. Here's a data center that might be located somewhere else, but there's an MPLS connection that is acting as a, oh, excuse me, as a site to site between these two. Okay. So we set up the rules <clears throat> to where, uh, the DC and the headquarters, uh, go through the MPLS network just fine so they can talk. And that's okay because there's resources needed here, resources needed here, and that's all good. But we also managed to um, write a rule in the SD-WAN, whereas if we lose internet connectivity here, the DC can use the MPLS as a fail over and use the SD-WAN over here for internet connectivity until that connection comes up. So, so the whole point of this, guys, is if we could get all of this set up, we should just be able to throw circuits at it as much as we want. That includes like internet access, VPN tunnels, additional MPLS uh, uh, connections, which that's expensive, but whatever. <laughs> okay. Uh, but, you know, I tried to watch the videos from Fortnite and just I could not get it to work. So, our only goal here. And, and for the rest of the, the night, right, or for this weekend, was to get a VPN tunnel to be added to the SD-WAN. And then, if for some reason this MPLS network goes down, that VPN tunnel will be utilized to access the connection between the DC and the headquarters, okay? And what's really neat about the SD-WAN and how it uses link quality checks... Oh, that's strike two, guys. If I yawn again, I'm just quitting. <laughs> just kidding. It could use quality checks because if something ever happens within that MPLS network, like, um, you know, something just screws up, uh, even though the connection is not down, we can set it to where it will fail over with the VPN tunnels anyways. It'll use the best link between the two. So enough talking. Let's start doing. So like I said, Every video has been leading up to this, so let's go over to our PC1 and let's go into our headquarters FortiGate, okay? So the very first thing that we are going to do is to create the uh, <clears throat> VPN tunnel. Then after we create the VPN tunnel, we're going to add it to the SD-WAN. Now, oh, that was my third yawn. Anyways. We cannot use the wizard for this because the wizard is going to create a VPN tunnel. It's going to create the routes. It's going to create the firewall policies and we'll not be able to add it to the SD-WAN. Okay, so we're going to have to create it manually. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's create the VPN tunnel to begin with between the HQ and the DC. So we'll have to do it on both sides also. All right, are you guys ready? So we're going to come down here to VPN. We're going to do a tunnel wizard. And instead of doing site to site, we're going to say custom, and this is going to be called 2DC, all right? We'll hit next, and now we have all of our options because it's custom. So we're reaching out to the default gateway of the DC, which is 10.200.6.1 in our lab environment, and we have to manually pick the interfaces, all right? So we're going to do port 1, okay? Uh, we're not using that transversal, so we don't need it. All right, and then we need a pre-share key. And then I'm just gonna leave my phase two into my quad zeros, all right? So I'm gonna hit okay. And there you go, we got a tunnel. By the way, that 40 duck, that was for my, uh, <laughs> my remote site demo. Anyways, he's still alive, he's still doing well. So, okay, good times, that was great. Let's go ahead and do it on the other side, all right? So let's go into our <clears throat> DC FortiGate. 
I think I said I was in Dallas, Texas. I don't know why I picked Dallas, but that's where it is. All right. So here we go. We're going to log in and we're going to create that tunnel, the corresponding tunnel. All right. So let's go to uh, VPN. <laughs> going to go to Z Wizard. All right. We're going to do custom and it's going to say to HQ, right? Go ahead next. And just like any other IPsec, the security associations have to match up. So 10, 200, 1.1. And the beauty about using like to like FortiGates is that all this pre share keys and Diffie Hillman groups are going to be the same. But we are not using tra that transversal and the pre share key to authenticate. Good times. We're going to leave the quad zero there. Nice. All right. So here we go. <clears throat> now we have our tunnel. Now, this is the part where it gets tricky. All right. So for starters, we're going to add it to the SD-WAN. Now, what I found out is if you add it to the SD-WAN, that's fine. But when you generate the health link checks, that health link is actually generated from the Fortinet. Fortinet, <laughs> the FortiGate, right? If you do not define an IP address on the IPsec tunnel, it's going to use the WAN interface, the outgoing interface's IP address for uh, traffic that it generates within that tunnel. We don't want that to happen, all right? So um, that was kind of the, the thing that I found out, just the long and hard way, okay? If we want to make sure that an IP address that comes from the FortiGate itself, administration-wise, things like health check, 40 telemetry, uh, we can even join it to the security fabric. We're going to want to put IP addresses on the interfaces before we add it to the SD-WAN. Let's do it, guys. Already? Um, I don't know why that took me so long to comprehend, but it did. I'm not very sharp, so maybe that's why. Maybe other people just think this is all second nature, but this is what I'm talking about. So by default, right, our VPN tunnels will not have... IP addresses assigned to them. So anything that's initiating from oh, the FortiGate itself, not through the tunnel, but from the FortiGate itself, is just going to use the outgoing interface. So instead, we're going to say, hey, you know what? We are going to uh, identify ourselves with 172.16.2. So I used a different octet here. Remember my MPLS, I used um, uh, 1, 2. And then our other side of the tunnel is going to be 172, 16, 2, 1 with the slash 32. All right. And I'm going to I'm going to make that pingable. I'm going to hit OK. All right. And then I'm going to go ahead and do it to the other side. OK. So here we go. Let's go to our network. Let's go to our interface. All right. See how 2DC has the quad zero? So we're going to go in here and we're going to put the opposites. <clears throat> so we're going to say this one is 172.16.2.1. And it's <laughs> it'd be nice if I use periods for my octets instead of dots. That's a new RFC standard. No, I'm just kidding. All right, here we go. And then 172, 16.2.1. Two with the slash 32. And I'm saying this again because it confused the 40 heck out of me. All right, guys. These IP addresses are for the VPN tunnels for traffic that originates and terminates at the Forti gates. Okay. Everything else is for it to go through the tunnel. All right. So, um, yeah, it just took me forever to realize that. Anyways. All right, <clears throat> now we're going to add it to the SD-WAN. So we're going to go to our SD-WAN, and we're going to add those interfaces here. So we're going to say, hey, we are going to add our DC tunnel. The gateway, and this is another advantage, we can pass it out specifically to 172.16.2.2, because that's the other side of the DC. All right, and I don't know why I'm using periods. I mean, uh, commas. Sorry, guys. It's late. Okay, there we go. All right, now there we go. Okay, and you see how, oop, there we go. 
And now let's go ahead and do it to the other side. All right, so here we are. Our DC. I'm just doing it step by step, nice and slow, guys. So now at the DC, we're going to do the corresponding. Okay. <laughs> so here we go. So we're going to add. Add what? To headquarters. And the IP address is going to be 172.162. Those better not be periods. One. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there we go. All right. No big deal, right? I mean, that should be good. So let's go ahead and ping it, because in theory, even without a firewall policy, our local end policy should be able to talk to FortiGate to FortiGate. All right, so um, let's give it a shot. So let's go ahead and try to ping our headquarters. So we'll say ping 172.16.2.1. Be nice if I didn't execute before that. Okay, batting zero here. All right. And the tunnel comes up, bada boom, bada bing, that is the VPN tunnel, yeah, to FortiGate to FortiGate. And we don't need a IP4 policy for this because it's our local end policy. It's like uh, management, right? So and because we did ping access on those two interfaces, we're good to go. Once again, I'm going to iterate this. You can also use this to do things like joining them to the security fabric or for doing 40 telemetry, or whatever. All right, so cool. Good times. <laughs> okay. All right, so the tunnel's up. Now what? Well, we have to get it working within our SD-WAN rules, okay? So if you remember, the way that we wrote the rules, so if we go over to our rules here, we're saying HQ through MPLS coming from our... DC going to our headquarters, I want you to use the best connection, but we only have one member. So guess what we're going to do now? We're going to add that interface to this rule. All right. So are you guys ready? So we double click. Okay. And we add the tunnel. All right. Now there's a problem. It will still never use that tunnel. What? Why? Because if we go to our performance SLAs, all right, we're only having an SLA for one interface here. We need SLAs for both the MPLS network, and which is already done, and also the uh, IPsec tunnel. So instead of using the other side of the MPLS network, so remember this is the interface, on the headquarters side, we are actually going to pick an internal interface within uh, HQ to be our our connection. So are you guys ready? So we're going to come in here and say, hey, you know what? We need both of these guys, all right? Because I want you to pick the best one between the two. Uh, in fact, we can even say, hey, in order to even participate, you need to have certain criteria here now just for the sake of of this lesson i'm not going to do that so that's going to be my final demo that i'll do one of these days <clears throat> but uh in other words if we can bring the connection down if our mpls network is trashed um but here we go so but i want it to be something common within our hq and that's why i made the local lan interface pingable so we're going to say 10 dot 10.1.254, which is the inside interface of the LAN in the headquarters. Okay, we're going to hit OK. All right. And let me hit a five here. And they both go down. <laughs> I was expecting this, guys. That's OK. All right. The reason why is because this now is dependent on an IP4 firewall rule. Before, it was FortiGate to FortiGate. Now, we're talking to a device beyond the FortiGate. Are you guys getting me? All right. So what we got to do here, okay, is, um, yeah, we got to set those rules into our firewall policy. So are you guys ready? So for starters, if we go to our IP4 policy and objects, 
all right? You're gonna see here that we have anything going from our subnet going to our destination, allow it through. So what do we have to add here now? All right, uh, we have to add our corresponding addresses that are our management interfaces. So in other words, we're gonna have to come in here, all right, and we're going to have to add a couple of new ones. Okay, so uh, one of them is going to be, and we're, we're just going to do this right now for both sides just to keep it, you know, congruent. So here we go. So we're going to say, hey, actually, you know what? Let's, let's slow down here because it's not going to make much sense until we do it the other direction. All right, because now it's, it's stateful. It's going out towards the headquarters. So let's go to headquarters and fix it. All right. See, this is why I should rehearse these things. Let me go back. Let me go back. So, um, because if you think about it, if we go back to our network and we go to our SD WAN performance SLAs, all right, we are generating traffic from our FortiGates and our VPN tunnel FortiGates to something internally, all right? So, we actually need to allow it first from the headquarters side to get these tunnels up, but then we're going to have to do the reverse on the other side. So, it's getting ahead of myself. So let's go back to headquarters real quick and fix those health connections. All right, so here we go. Okay, so now I'm gonna go to my policy and objects. I'm gonna go to my IP4 policy, okay? And now we're gonna say, hey, you know what? Popping out of the SD-WAN, coming to my port six, right now we only have 10102 as possible IP addresses that can hit this firewall rule. So instead, I'm gonna come in here, I'm going to add the MPLS IP address and also the VPN subnet. Now I'm gonna do a subnet for the VPN so we can add additional circuits in later. Now we already have one of these rules, all right? So we'll just use it, okay? But now we're gonna to have to create a new one for our VPN management IP address. So we'll just say uh, VPN. I'll grab a new color here. I'll say orange. All right. I'll say 172.16.2.0/24. In other words, it just has to have the same three octets. All right. And lo and behold, come on. Once we do that, where'd it go? That was kind of weird. Did I cancel that or something? Let me try that one more time. Oh, come on. Sorry, guys. Well, let's try that again. VPN. Okay, you know what? It's a web browser thing. Did you guys see that? It said dupe. So let's hit a five. Sometimes that happens with the FortiGates because they're a web-based GUI. Sometimes it has some, see, it was made. It just wasn't updating. Sometimes it kind of wigs out. So, But now that we're expecting traffic from those management IP addresses, all right? Okay. And we come back into our data center, and we hit F5. Guess what comes up? Ta-da! All right. So, and like I said, I was kind of getting ahead of myself because I was trying to write the rules to pass traffic through, but that's just for the management interfaces, okay? So, um, but now that it is coming from those management interfaces, both from the MPLS interface and also from the VPN interface, they can now come up. And I hit F5 again, you'll see that they have some pretty good, pretty good, uh, statistics there okay so now that is happening from the dc to the hq let's do it again now from the hq to the dc all right let's get our health monitor checks up for both of these connections so all right so let's go back to headquarters uh pc1 there we go all right and we're going to go to our network sd wan Performance SLAs, so we should only have one here. All right, so I'm gonna open that bad boy up. 
And then I'm going to add the DC VPN tunnel. And instead of using the other side of the MPLS network, we're going to say 172. Actually, you know what? It's going to be 10.10.2.100. Now I'm picking a server that is dependent on uh, 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 the DC side. So in other words, that 10.10.2.200 is some kind of server that we need. So we're going to use that as our actual connection tester. All right. And if we hit OK here, it should fail all right so and because we have to go write the same kind of firewall rule back on the other side to get these things up and running okay so let's go back to dc now and manipulate its firewall rule and this is what i was trying to get ahead of and i'm like hey if i show that out of order it's not going to make much sense so let's go back to our ip4 policy and allow those management interfaces to hit that interface okay so uh here we go to headquarters all right but now we're going to add all right nope that's the name now we're going to add those other interfaces all right so here we go are you guys ready so we're going to say new address and we never had to use the MPLS one before, so we'll make that one first. So MPLS. All right. I think we made that one blue or purple or something like that. All right. 172, 16, 1, 0, slash 30, because it's a point to point. All right. Should do a little boing, 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 boing. There we go. And then also we're going to add the management VPN tunnels. Okay, so once again, we're going to have a lot of redundant tunnels. Not tonight. I'll record that another time. But here we go. So VPN. All right. We'll make that orange because that's actually what IPsec packets taste like, guys. Like orange. Like the popsicles. All right. So 172, uh, 16, 2, 0, slash 24. All right. And now that we're expecting that IP addresses, okay, and we come back to our headquarters sides, guess what should be up? Nothing. Okay, that wasn't good. Did I not do that right? Here we go. Hold up. Um, coming here. Oh, they need to be down here. They're not going out. They're coming in. Come on, Devin. Don't be a ding dong. All right. Sorry, guys. It's coming from headquarters, not to headquarters. Wah, wah, wah. Man, I tell you. All right. My bad. This is why I record my screw ups, guys. Okay. Just so you, you see it all happening. All right. Here we go. I got my directions mixed up. That's also why, by the way, guys, me personally, I always name my policies from and to just for that reason. So here we go. Now that should work. Now that health check should go up. All right. All right. Let's check it. Are right, you guys ready? Man, I'm telling you, I can't catch a break. All right. Let's try that again. There they are. There they are. They're up. So now what's really neat about this, all right, in theory, and by the way, I can take out that port five. Um, I was just doing that to keep the internet traffic from load balancing out. All right. Now here's what's the neat thing, and I'm not going to do this tonight, but in theory, we should be able to add a VPN connection for each one of those connections up there, the WANs, right? And, uh, we can add additional WAN circuits. And because the rules are there, right? And because we, we set everything up, we should just be able to, to add them as much as we want to. All right, so I'm gonna do that on a later video. My only goal here was just to get the redundant tunnel up for, for uh, IPsec, all right? Let's go ahead and review our rules, okay? So once again, these are top-down rules. 
But the only thing that we're going to change is that we're now going to add the VPN interface to the qualifying rule that sits on top. I don't know why that's spinning, so let's do it over here too uh, while, that, while we're waiting, all right? Because it should just be good to go. So let's go to our um, network. Let's go to our rules, all right? And you guys see how we only have port five now? We're gonna come in here and say, hey, you know what? Also include, also include, oh, come on. Here it is. Also include our DC tunnel as a part of the qualification. All right, see that? And then we'll do the same on this side, which we've already done. And in theory, guys, in theory, that should be it. We should be good to go. All right. So how are we going to test this? Well, we're going to kill. We're going to kill the MPLS connection. So, all right. Are you guys ready? So uh, here we are. I guess I'll just put a, a ping loop or something up. So I'll say ping 10.10.2.2. All right, so there it is. Okay, that's going through the MPLS network. And let's verify this real quickly by uh, looking at our session table. Okay, so let's go to our uh, 40 view. Let's go to our session table. Okay, we're just going to verify which link it's going out of. All right, and uh, all right, we got our 10.10.100 going to 10.10.2. So there it is. We should be a way to do a quick filter on this. Huh, I guess not. All right. That's all right because what I really want is to show you guys it's using the MPLS. Okay. You guys see that? That's our ping loop. Watch what happens when we kill the MPLS connection. Oh no, someone unplugged it. Oh no. Good times are over. All right. Oh, come on. You can do it, dude. Yeah, look at that. Come on, guys. That's flipping awesome. <sighs> the crowd's going wild. All right, check this out. Let's hit refresh. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, that's right. It's using the IPSAC tunnel to reach it. Come on, guys. That is awesome. And I got it to work. That's the best part. Look at this. 10.10. This is our mission critical app, right? Look at that. Oh, like nothing happened. And what's cool about this in future videos, and guys, I will wrap this up in a couple of days. We're going to make a, a bunch of redundant VPN connections. And you're going to see if that MPLS network ever gets trashed, we can make it use the IPsec tunnel automatically all right writing the right rules okay once again once we restore the mpls network all right because remember it's continuously doing the health check okay and and by the way this one will actually not not interrupt this connection right it shouldn't go down i don't think it will um let's take a look well, it is stateless, but if we go ahead and we we do that again, because there's no reason to converge if it's already established. That's what I'm trying to say here. So, but if we go ahead and we uh, do this again, maybe if I can catch it in our session table, you'll see that I'll use the MPLS network. All right. See, went right back to using the MPLS network, went right back to using the MPLS network because it has the lower latency. And by the way, I now realize why that took a little bit longer because it takes a little bit longer for the health statistics in our SD-WAN to, to get back up to uh, the MPLS being the better network of the two. So there you guys go. Bam. I'm telling you, I watched their, their three-minute video on their websites, on their channel. And the guy's like, yeah, just add the, 
just add the uh, the VPN connections to the SD-WAN and everything magically works. No, not so much. So guys, here we go. Here's a recap. <laughs> All right. You're going to add the VPN tunnels without using the wizard. Then you're going to set management IP addresses that correspond to each side of those tunnels, just kind of like a point-to-point -point MPLS connection. Once you do that, you're going to add it to the SD-WAN with the default gateway of that VPN tunnel being the corresponding other side of that VPN's VPN tunnel's management IP address that you established. Then after that, you set the help check right to something internally through the vpn tunnel which on our case we use the fortigates uh, default gateway and then on the other side we used a mission critical server that might be important to us then after that you set the firewall rules to allow those management ip addresses to talk through the firewall all right and then after that you redefine the rules by sticking the corresponding vpn tunnel within the sd wan rules and then bada boom bada bing the hard part's over with. So guys, I know these have been long videos, but you know what? I don't care because, man, I was dinking around with class all week trying to figure that out. And I honestly uh, could not figure out the magic puzzle piece until I finally figured out why those IP addresses were needed for the hell checks. And, and yeah, whatever. I'm, I'm leaving it at that. So guys, I'm not doing another video tonight. I probably won't do it tomorrow, but I will. Uh, I will essentially walk us through uh, building VPN tunnels for both directions, and then you're going to see the beauty of us just being able to throw like maybe another another uh, connection through here, another connection through here. Uh, we still got to get our branch office there and routing. Um, we're just going to roll with this. So, but the hard part is over with. So, hopefully, that was enough. I was recording this for a specific person. So, um, if they watch this and everything looks good too, man, I'd really like to know if this is the solution that you're looking for. Because uh, that's actually why I do these videos. And I'm stoked that I got it working. So, all right, guys, you have a good night. And I will see you at another time. All right. Peace.